I want the original movie cast, but just Super Mario to it, where it's not directly connected to anything. That would be a, <laughs> just the best, you know, sort of homage. Like, remake, do an American version of a Japanese movie that has nothing to do with Mario, and then horseshoe Mario in. The, oh, that'd be so good. It's like a, a Wall Street thriller in Japan, <laughs> and then a, an Italian <laughs> plumber is... <laughs> <laughs> he comes in. <laughs> I'm a taxa man. <laughs> he pulls up a, a radish and throws it at someone's head. <laughs> Mario to the movie is just like vegetable based assault. <laughs> Welcome back to Cartridge Base Radio. I'm Donald, once again joined by Brad. Hello! Brad, are you ready to talk about us? Yes! Uh, why don't you tell us about Cartridge Base Radio? Cartridge Based Radio is a podcast that started in early 2017. It is on its 52nd episode right now, actually, and it has negative five listeners. Wow, we what? Oh, no, that, that's not true. Thank you, everyone who's been listening. That's awesome. Thanks, Mom. If you shared an episode, uh, you can draw yourself a star and hang it on the wall because you're our number one fan. Or just draw the star on the wall. Yes. Make your significant other or mother happy with you. Uh, so, Brad, let's talk about our own show that's not self-serving in any way, shape, or form. Okay. Um, what has been your favorite thing on the show this year? It's going to sound weird, but I liked the one where we tempted each other with items. You could have one thing, but not the other. Yeah, you could have a classic expensive game or a wheelbarrow, uh, which you foolishly passed up on. Brad, that wheelbarrow sucked then, and it sucks now. <laughs> it held like three and a half cubic somethings of whatever you wanted to put in there. If the wheelbarrow is so great, you'd remember all its details. It was red. That's all I needed to remember. I really enjoyed that episode. Uh, you pitting was the Silent Hill 2 against Tailspin was probably the most evil thing you've ever done. Yes. Well, you can take solace in the fact that you don't have to make these choices in real life. Like, for the show, yes. But if you have an extra $35, you can just buy Tailspin and keep your Silent Hill 2. Okay, that wasn't clear, and I've been avoiding Tailspin this whole time. I'm not coming to your house to see if I find, like, both things in your house. Um, or a wheelbarrow. I mean... I have a wheelbarrow. Ah. It's not that one, but, you know, you just need a wheelbarrow. <laughs> uh, what was your favorite episode that we've done thus far? You know, I, I really enjoyed not one specific episode. I really enjoyed doing the whole uh, couple months where we were doing all the games from 1997. But if I had to pick just one episode to kind of be, like, a favorite, I think it might actually be the one where we just took San Francisco Rush and dragged it behind the office and just kicked it for a while. Uh, and then I called out some of my childhood hero magazine writers and, and asked them to come on the show and defend their, their reviews saying San Francisco Rush was amazing. Yeah, that was a good episode. Very popular episode, too. So, um, I'm trying to look it up. We had an episode that we need to talk about because you, the fans confused us and we just like to know what happened here yeah i know exactly which one you're talking about it was our fifth episode on soul caliber it was and we originally named it sexy george washington yes after um what's her name's costume where she's dressed like sexy george washington Ivy. Ivy, yes. And it was possibly the least downloaded episode that we ever put out. Yes. I mean, it was our fifth episode, but even like weeks later when we had far more episodes, it was lagging by far behind all the other episodes. Yeah, and uh, it's probably three months after we made the bold decision to change its name. And since it's a fighting game... We've you may have noticed our naming convention for fighting games. We changed it into one of the steps in our fighting game process to step two, wear less armor or something like that. Yeah, that sounds right. And the 
Download numbers went up. Yeah, so I'm just wondering what our fan base has against George Washington, and specifically sexy George Washington. Maybe they don't like to uh, think of the forefather of our country as sexy. Maybe this is a wholesome podcast, and you know, just the idea that that someone could be found attractive is just off putting to to our listeners. I'd be dressed up as George Washington is damn sexy, and I don't care who knows it. We still refer to it as Sexy George Washington, so if you've downloaded it and enjoyed its new name, just know that we still refer to it as that. Ha ha! (laughs) Yes. Whatever you want to tell yourself, you're still listening to an episode titled Sexy George Washington. And you can't take it back now. Uh, Brad, let's talk about the worst episode we ever put out (laughs) which one tomb raider (laughs) yes uh that was only our second episode and i would say that we were still learning a lot although our first episode i thought went really really well so i'm not sure why there was such a regression between episodes one and two i think i have an answer to that question (laughs) we spent like five months via email talking about the first episode yeah and planning it out in excruciating detail and then we recorded it and it went off really well and then we sat down the next week and we're like (laughs) what are we doing we don't know how to make a podcast (laughs) so yeah given five months to prepare we can put out a great show and if you're wondering yes we actually did talk for five months back and forth it all started with a joke about how we should make a podcast you know asking what is M. Bison's plan for world domination via karate tournament? One of us said, I'd make a podcast. And yes. then, like, yeah, I'd too. And it steamrolled. Our friend Peter helped us kind of massage the early stages. At one point, I think the show was going to be named Firehouse of Awesome. Yeah, we came up with a lot of bad names for this show before we settled on Cartridge Based Radio. It was just kind of like the least bad idea we had. <laughs> Yeah, it was the one that floated to the top of the turd pile. But going back before that, we should talk how we like met Met. You had a website about how you hated video games. We had a mutual acquaintance in uh, our friend Peter who had um, seen an article I'd written for a different website and then he wrote an article for that website. And somehow he started following my website, and then he was following yours, and I think he told you about mine, and then you invited me to do a weekly roundtable on your website, and is that pretty much how it all went? I'm using the word website an awful lot. Yeah, you did. So let's talk. My website was did not finish, which I never finished, so it did its job, and we thought... We should bring this guy Brad in so the site is funny, because there's three of us, and... Yeah, prior to my arrival, the site was just a garbage fire. Yeah, it was. We were just throwing tires on it, like, gotta keep this burning. But it wasn't even like, oh, this website was low quality. Like, the the website itself was just an animated gif of a garbage fire (laughs) with people throwing tires onto it. And they're like, this is the whole website. It played some MIDI music in the background. It was a bad MIDI version of a Final Fantasy VII tune that I had put together with a Casio keyboard. Uh, You had the option to look at the website with or without frames, and it worked best in Netscape Navigator at 800 by 600 resolution. Oh, now I feel bad about me. (laughs) No. Alta Vista is how I actually originally found that site. Wow, you have just dated yourself. (laughs) No, we both had websites with no one looking at them, so we thought if we work together, more people won't look at them. Yes. And we were right. No new people came in when we joined forces. Yeah, it was actually, it was a theory that we put forth in our very first episode, which was that you were the only person that read my website. I was the only one that read yours. If we got together for a podcast, there'd be nobody to listen to it. And we have exceeded that expectation by like five or six people. No, we've exceeded it by a lot more, which is surprising. Not quite sure how that happened since we are classically known for being horrible at promoting this in any way, shape, or form. Like, did you remember to post this on Facebook? No. Oops. (laughs) (laughs) Who uses Facebook anymore? The kids all read the newspaper. That's how they get their information. Bring me some pictures of (laughs) Spider-Man. 
we got to get on that Snapchat or in WhatsApp. I heard those are popular. I don't know how to promote, but whatever. I set up a MySpace page. I don't know what else you want from me. It's probably pretty good. I don't know how to navigate MySpace. It's just like, do you want to listen to the new Justin Timberlake track? No, I do not. <laughs> Um, so we've had a couple episodes where people contacted us after to ask questions about stuff we missed, and I thought we could take a moment to address the stuff we missed, Brad. What would you say our greatest flub in an episode ever was? This was... I'll tell you this much. This was a bad one because we both were aware of this thing and we just didn't talk about it for some reason. It was a big part of the game. Uh... And afterward, you know, uh, my one friend who does listen to this show was just like, were you trying to, like, avoid spoilers on a game that came out 20 years ago? And I was like, oh, my gosh, we never talked about it. Uh, you want to let the cat out of the bag? It is the reverse castle in Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Yeah. Um, for the handful of you who listen to the show and didn't play that game, uh, first of all, shame on you, because we really pushed hard for everybody to play that game. So if you didn't do it after listening to that episode, I don't know what you're getting out of this podcast. I mean, we're glad you're listening, but <laughs> are you really listening or are you just kind of playing it? Uh, but if you haven't played Symphony of the Night, after you beat, quote unquote, the boss, you get teleported to another castle except it's the castle that you've been in the whole time but upside down and it basically the game is twice as long as as you think it is i mean i think we had it written down in our notes even to talk about it but then we got sidetracked by architecture and physics and we just never talked about it and then you were contacted and i was contacted like, why didn't you talk about it? And then we talked to each other and we're like, oh, wow, we seriously did not talk about it. We are bad at this. Yeah, we are bad at Castlevania. <laughs> we let Alucard down. He unfriended us on MySpace. <laughs> Another thing that we felt bad about was in the Metroid episode, a theory we should have dug down on was that the pirates were just trying to save the metroids yeah this was something that we barely mentioned right near the end of that episode it was the idea that the space pirates are actually space environmentalists and they're trying to save the last metroid from going extinct at your hands and that's why they keep like stealing it because you have eradicated almost the entire species which seems to have some really unique energy properties and you're just like hunting them for sport or whatever like oh this is fun let's kill some more metroids yeah, we really should have dug down into that. I mean, Metroid was a great episode. We discovered a lot about Samus in that one. But, man, I wish you'd gone deeper with that one. You know, it's it's something that happens on the show from time to time, is we'll finish an episode, and then afterward it'll be like, oh, man, I just thought of like this alternate theory that would have been really great. There's an expression in French that, I'm not going to attempt to say it in French, but the, uh, the rough translation is escalator wit. And it basically means that think of something really great as you're getting on the stairs to leave wherever you were that it would have been appropriate to say it and uh, we've definitely had uh, some cases of escalator wit over the course of the year yeah we're much better at this show when we're not recording the show apparently oh man you should hear us like off air we are the best podcast you've ever heard it's just you know once you put some mics in front of us and expect us to actually do stuff that's when we start to suck you probably get hints of it from the what we call the opening joke, which is our pre-roll before the music. That's That all comes from the just us jawing for 20 minutes where we tell ourselves we're getting ready. We're like, <laughs> we don't know how to make podcasts, so we're just going to talk until we absolutely have to start recording. You can usually tell how much we enjoyed the game in question by how long the pre-show talk goes on. You know, something like Shaq Fu, and it's just like, oh, let's just, you know, BS for a little bit longer so we don't have to talk about Shaq Fu. <laughs> Shaq Fu's pre-roll is like 40 minutes long. <laughs> it's longer than the actual show was. Our guest for that episode was very confused about how we did the show. Yeah, sorry about that, Dan. Uh, we should take a moment and thank Tony, Mark, Scott, 
and Dan for coming on the show and bearing witness to our erratic behavior as we record. We should probably actually thank Mark twice since he was on the show twice, or possibly four times because he brought so much energy (laughs) to the show that it was like he did two episodes each time to our one. Yes, but we also might have to take away a thanks from Mark because of the entire contents of the Sonic episode and what we learned in it. Had bad dreams for weeks. It's horrifying. Sonic is horrifying. (laughs) If you take away one thing from this podcast when all is said and done, I hope it's that Sonic is horrifying. I mean, it's a quality game in the 16-bit era, but boy, it's gone some places. Uh, I had a question once, what happened to the outro music? And at some point, uh, some people started saying, this outro music's not great. It's like German techno dance music. And I thought the original outro music sounded kind of like a loading screen in the first Mass Effect. I mean, I don't know if I really wanted to summon loading screen with what I wrote, but... <laughs> 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 Actually, I can field another question now. I made that music in GarageBand on my phone. So people who've asked me where I got it, it's mine with loops I got from Apple. The opening, I don't know how I made it. I think it's like 20 minutes. And the the now outro, it took forever because I was like, oh no, people don't like the outro. I have to <laughs> fix it. And the new one, I think, fits more with our style being a little bit 16-bitty. Yeah, and keeping with the theme of, oh, this sounds like music from this game. It kind of sounds vaguely like the end level music in the first Streets of Rage. So, like, every time I hear the outro music, I keep expecting to hear the sound effect of it, like, totaling up all our bonus points that we earned in the episode. We we probably earned, like, five or six bonus points per episode oh yeah you know just like streets of rage like during the course of recording the episode i'm just walking around my house punching garbage cans and eating whatever i find inside i bet your wife is so mad when you do that well as long as i eat the garbage it's not making a mess it doesn't have to take it to the curb uh i think i left it in once There was an episode where you mentioned that when i do the goodbyes you're waiting to hear the outro music yes (laughs) And it never comes. Uh, We both do that now, so something has happened to us throughout the course of making this fine program that has crosswired our brains somehow to not recognize when we're doing this and when it's a pre-recorded thing that we're listening to later. Um, Getting back to the discussion we were having on, you know, some of the ideas that we didn't think of until after the show was recorded, uh, we did an episode on Abe's Odyssey, and... We had talked about how in the intro to the game, it's showing all these animals that have gone extinct from being turned into snack food by the company, the evil company in the game. And then when you escape their factory, you find these animals aren't extinct. And every week, Donald sends me the show after he's done editing it before it airs. And I just kind of listen to it to make sure like he didn't accidentally like fill it with swear words or whatever. So I listened to it and I, I had an idea that maybe what is actually happening in Abe's Odyssey is that there's somebody who works for the evil corporation who is planning to start his own competing business and he's sneaking the animals out and telling everyone they're extinct so that like six months later he can come out with his brand new snack bars based on all these uh, flavors that everybody else thought was extinct. Man, that would have made that episode way better. Yep. Good job, Brad. We should have just re-recorded it real quick and people would have never known. So buckle in, everybody. We're just going to redo Abe's Odyssey for the rest of this episode. Welcome back to Cartridge Base Rate. <laughs> <laughs> That actually leads into the question my wife wanted to know. She had a question for you, for us, but it's more for you. Okay. She wants to know what inspired you to pick the particular games that you picked to play for the show this year. And the reason this is for you is because you basically are in charge of picking the games and what not yeah you know there's a couple of things that i try to think about one is if i have any ideas at all that i think would be fun to discuss so you know if i play streets of rage and i'm like wait is how does this make crime stop happening that that's uh that's a good place to start with an episode uh the other thing is we play these games so 
if I'm already playing a game or if there's a game that I've been wanting to play, then, you know, I might try to think of a way we could talk about it on the show. It has, I mean, sometimes we've talked about some really bad games that I did not enjoy going back and playing again. Um, and sometimes I didn't spend as much time playing them as, you know, I have some of the better ones that we've talked about. So, you know, if it's kind of sound like I talked about Shaq Fu without actually, like, playing a ton of Shaq Fu, it's because I didn't play a ton of Shaq Fu. No one blames you. Like, whatever the bare minimum amount of Shaq Fu that you can play is to be able to discuss it on a podcast, that's how much Shaq Fu I played. I believe the bare minimum you can play of Shaq Fu to talk about on a podcast also exceeds the maximum that you should play Shaq Fu, just in general. I'll put it to you this way. I spent more time watching that early 90s rap video that Shaq guest starred in with uh, Fu Schnickens than I did playing Shaq Fu. It's fair. Uh, oh, also a mistake that was pointed out to me, uh, Secrets of Mana. It was, I'm told that the spaceship is pronounced Epoch, not Epic. Was that Secret of Mana or was that Chrono Trigger? Oh, Chrono Trigger. Man, you are bad at this. <laughs> it's because I, I just watched a video before we started on the Secret of Mana's remake. And boy, does that look bad. Like, why do you remake that? Hey, that gives us a nice segue into something we had been talking about. Oh, we got to talk about this on the show, and we never really knew how. Uh, but that Secret of Mana remake can't be any worse than Final Fantasy XV side quest about cup noodles. Oh, we didn't know how to really deal with this, and I still think we probably would need more time to really dig into it. But there is a whole side quest in... Final Fantasy 15 about a cup of noodles. And we're talking like the brand you buy in the store is in the game. And like the big burly guy with like the huge chest tattoo and he wears like just a leather vest with no shirt underneath will not stop talking about these cup of noodles. And Brad sent me this video and I watched the whole thing. And I was horrified. I was like, did they run out of money and approach cup of noodles and be like, hey, do you want to be in a Final Fantasy game? We promised to say cup of noodles 46,000 times. It, it is the weirdest thing. Like, who approached who? How did they think this was going to work? But yeah, essentially, you take time out of going to save the world or whatever you're doing in Final Fantasy 15. And like, the yeah, the one guy in your party who looks like the former pro wrestler Test just won't shut up about cup noodles, which is like a specific ramen brand. You go on a whole quest because he thinks if you add other ingredients to the cup before you cook the noodles... It will make it better, but then he discovers by the end of this side quest, it was already perfect to begin with. Yeah, that's the conclusion, is, oh, these are so great, they can't possibly be improved on. That's what you get out of this side quest. It's kind of like that old saying, the treasure at the end of the adventure was the friendships we made along the way. And I did not want to play Final Fantasy XV because it looked like the quest of the guys who discuss vaping too much. <laughs> and then you sent me that and I was like, whoa, I'm completely out of this game just all the way. I kind of wish they would retcon it into every Final Fantasy now. Like, you just go and uh, play Final Fantasy VI after the cataclysm in the middle of the game, and you're in the world of ruin, and Celeste is going to jump off a cliff and kill herself, and then, like, she finds out the cup noodles somehow still exist in this destroyed world, and it gives her the will to go on and have an adventure. <laughs> Yeah, find out that cup noodles are what's inside of Magitech armor, and that's why everyone likes driving them. It's got a little cooker right in there. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was just dumb. And, you know, big thanks to your brother for sending you that text and video. Also, he told us about the storyline in the new Madden game. Oh my gosh, yes. Um... We gotta do something with that at some point. Like, I don't know what, but... We need to talk about that in more depth than Cup Noodles in Final Fantasy XV, because, boy, that sounded special. Oh, you know, anything that uh, 
has you flying to Abu Dhabi to get quarterbacking lessons from Dan Marino. You know, just like uh, all the new players in the NFL have done for the last several seasons. Why is Dan Marino in Abu Dhabi is the question. Well, if you want to find out, you got to play uh, Madden 18 story mode. Mm. Yeah, we'll dig into that later. I don't I mean that's that's our backstory, really, what we've done so far. I mean, if you've listened to the whole thing, if you're just getting in on this episode, yikes. <laughs> Maybe go back and listen to some of our classic shopping episodes. I guess we should talk about next season. Uh yeah. We're going to make some changes to the show uh, for our second season that I think will make it a better show for everyone and uh, more enjoyable. So we are going to go to a bi-weekly format. I think people will enjoy that because it means we'll only be putting out 26 terrible episodes of the show as opposed to a full 52. Uh, So already, you know, everybody's life is getting better. But no, uh, real, really, I think we can, with two weeks to prepare, we can kind of take on some higher concept things, spend a little more time in the games, and uh, we're going to be kind of getting away from the whole game of the week format a little bit. We'll still, each episode will probably still focus on one specific game in a lot of cases, but it's not just going to be like, oh, this was good, this wasn't good, uh, this was kind of silly. You know, like we're going to be taking deeper dives and talking about what, what hopefully will be more interesting topics. That was our original goal with the show, and because of... The treadmill we jumped on quickly lost focus on that, and we really want to get back to it, and we think this less episodes giving us more time to prep and whatnot is going to make a better show. And also, editing the show takes a lot of my time. I mean, this is for fun. We're not asking for money or anything, and, you know, it's just, it's a big chunk of my time with my wife and kids that I kind of want to reclaim some of that so going to this new format will make that a little bit easier yeah and I mean there were some ideas for shows that we had had that we're probably going to do in this upcoming year that we had wanted to do for a long time now but it just wasn't possible with the way the the show's been set up so far uh one idea we had involves us having to play, like, ten PlayStation games, and that just... I mean, not that we'd spend a ton of time on them, but even so, like, that just isn't really feasible in one week when, sadly, we still have our day jobs. We haven't quite figured out how to uh, make a living at this yet. Again, bad at marketing. If you know marketing and you want the illustrious price of zero dollars to tell us how it's done, get a hold of us. Um, so, yeah. Uh, there's going to be less episodes, but we're hoping less episodes will equal higher quality content. Uh, we pretty much got all of season two already mapped out, which that's pretty exciting. So we know it's coming at all times and it gives us time to think about it. We hope you'll stick with us if you've stuck up with us this far and you're not sad that we won't be in your ears every single week. You're like, oh man, I miss Brad's sultry voice. You know, if if you want to get excited about this upcoming season, like, some weeks it's going to be, like, me and Donald are going to compete in a fun way. Sometimes we're going to be really diving into, like, the whole economics of a game world. There's just, it's going to be different and better is the best way that I can describe it. I mean, this first 52, we were just trying to figure out what we were doing. And somewhere along the way, instead of asking some big questions, it just turned into us describing the game. Yeah. And that's not fun. Uh, you could just play the game and figure out what it is. Uh, side note, uh, you may have noticed our very short-lived series of us explaining a game to the other person died. And you're welcome. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we talked about how Tomb Raider's our worst episode, but uh, Donald explains Fear Effect to Brad, and Brad explains Dynasty Warriors to Donald. Uh, Not our finest moments on the show. No, those make uh, Tomb Raider look like an Academy Award for podcast contender. Um, Not, it's, it's just, yeah, we've been trying to figure this out all along, which I imagine you've noticed. Uh, I think we should probably apologize to the city of buffalo for 
everything we've thrown at it? Never. Okay, we take that back now. Buffalo. Well, yeah. Also, also Finland. You know why? Brad, leave Finland alone. Yeah, we'd like to thank everyone around the world who's downloaded us. I mean, accidents happen, and you click a show, and you don't know what it is, and suddenly it's on your iPhone. You know, we understand. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's been weird looking at all the different places around the world that have listened to us and think, wow, someone across the ocean is listening to us. That's weird. You see a lot of downloads in a country where uh, English isn't the official language, and you think, oh, is it, you know, some people who live in that country and speak English? Are they maybe uh, people from the U.S. that live there now, and, like, this is a little taste of home? Is it people trying to learn English by listening to a, a podcast in that language? Or is this show just more enjoyable when you can't actually understand what we're saying, which has kind of been my leading theory? I wish I didn't know what we were saying, because that'd be so much better. So, But yeah, thank you to everyone around the world and inside the United States for putting up with our tomfoolery this last year. Just blows me away it's been a year. I mean, I was like, this is going to last three weeks and we're both going to get tired of it, because we're old. Yes, and cranky and sore. But here we are. So, yes, changes on the horizon. Thank you for sticking with us this far. I've had a great time. Oh, yeah. Uh, I am really, for as much as I've picked on it this episode, I'm really proud of uh, what we've done so far. Uh, and even even our not great episodes, I'll still go back and, uh, and think about some of the funnier parts that are in there. Uh, I'm very proud of this show, and I've had a lot of fun doing it. And if no one was listening, which is kind of the case, uh, I'd still do it. So, Brad likes that joke, but we know you guys are out there listening to it. It's just a fun goof to say nobody's listening to the show. It's part of my philosophy to kind of stay loose and spontaneous. You know, just... Uh, what do they say? Like, dance like no one's looking, podcast like no one's listening. Uh, that classic saying by Notre Dame. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, so if you got any final thoughts on our own show in this very self-serving episode? <laughs> um, no, you know, just uh, like I said, stay tuned for next season because the show is going to get bigger and better. Uh, it'll be like Top Gear meets Planet Money. Um, you'll love it. <laughs> that, that's the promo that yeah, I've just been, you know, working so hard to cobble together. Man, that's why you locked yourself in your basement for three weeks. Like, I'm coming up with this new promo. <laughs> I'm going to take two things that have nothing to do with video games, one of which most people probably haven't heard of, and say that they're going to be like... A show will be a cross between the two. Yeah, so hopefully you've listened to both those things and you're, like, excited now. If not, I guess Google them. I just wrote that promo specifically for me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what would make me want to listen to a show? <laughs> well, I mean, you'll be here for the shows then because you'll want to know what happens <laughs> next, I guess. I promise to be here for some of the shows. Awesome. That's... Great. So, uh, if you want to, please uh, head over to iTunes and give us some stars and write a quick review. That would help. Or just make a Chewbacca noise and give us five stars. If you want to type Chewbacca noise as your review, we would love that. If you want to get a hold of us, the information's in the show notes. And in case you didn't know where the show notes are on your phone's player you should be able to swipe and see them or you can come to our site cartridgebaseradio.com and see the show notes and look at the art i make for each of these episodes yes i take great joy in making the arts i've made some really stupid ones this last year i think my all-time favorite that i've made is nikki six standing on a beach with a burning pile of chrono cross behind him that one is very good i'm still partial to the one that was probably your favorite right before you made the nikki six one which is uh the bushido blade one with slash about to face off against the seven samurai uh yeah also big thanks to slash who's the most talked about musician on this podcast <laughs> <laughs> guess that brings us to the end of our first year 
of doing this. Um, I'm Donald. That was Brad. And we had Gretchen write in, who's been a fan of us since the beginning, wrote us on Twitter and said, outro music. My podcast player has this nifty button that says 2x. Oh, okay. So everybody sounds like they're chipmunks. Yeah. I I cranked it down to about 1.4 yeah. to take a little of the chipmunkness out of it. Yeah. But then when I got caught up and I listened to it at normal speed, it's weird. Like, someone give them... <laughs>